This week on Avalanche in San Diego. Guys go to Lusardi Truck Trail, try to find quartz crystals, and cook a hearty campground meal. The first Lusardi brother came to California in 1860 when he was 22 years old. Pietro Lusardi was born in Parma, Italy in 1838. He came to San Francisco by way of New York where he worked selling fruit to get enough money to get to Panama. In 1866 he traveled by boat and made it to Panama and crossed the Isthmus of Panama by mule train and then took a ship to San Francisco. Pietro Lusardi and Marco Bruschi were the first Italian pioneers of significance in San Diego. After nine years spent in Mariposa County gold mining, Lusardi arrived in San Diego in 1866, Bruschi in 1869. Pietro traveled to Lower California to investigate mining opportunities there. Returning to San Diego, he abandoned his mining work. He then started a large sheep ranch on the lower slopes of what was then called Smith Mountain. The name was later changed to Palomar Mountain. Okay, now there's water flowing over. It was at this time that he was joined by his younger brother, Francisco. In the area where the brothers herded their sheep, Lusardi Canyon runs north and south just west of the San Jose Honor Camp. The canyon was named for them. In 1887 the brothers, ending their sheep business, settled on government land on a ranch near Black Mountain, between Black Mountain and the present-day Rancho Santa Fe. The brothers homesteaded their first land along a creek which flows in the rainy season between the present-day communities of Los Penasquitos and Rancho Bernardo. Today it is known as Lusardi Creek, although in the 1880s it had no name. The Lusardis added to their homesteads by buying out neighbors who wished to leave the area until they owned approximately 3,000 acres where they raised hay and grain. The area became known as the Lusardi District. The little community of Lusardi was located in this area 5 miles south of Lake Hodges and 3 miles northwest of Black Mountain. In 1896 Francisco traded his interest in the Lusardi district for 160 acres in Aliso Canyon, southwest of Escondido. The land of the Lusardis was later sold to Douglas Fairbanks Sr., and it became part of the sprawling Rancho Zorro, named for one of his favorite motion pictures. Rancho Santa Fe had some illustrious neighbors in the persons of America's sweetheart Mary Pickford and her husband Douglas Fairbanks. The two biggest box office names in the era of the silent screen in the 1920s. Doug and Mary separated and were divorced on January 10, 1935. In the settlement, Doug got Rancho Zorro and Mary got their home in Beverly Hills, Pickfair. Doug's death on December 11, 1939 at the age of 56, ended the Rancho Zorro dreams. Thank you for subscribing to the Avalanche History Channel. Okay. Guys explore this weird area that the locals call the big parking lot. The area that has been used for many a discreet high school party, but was actually built for water runoff collection in year 1970. The asphalt parking lot pools the rainwater and leads it through a pipe into a collection tank. I wonder why they would need so much water at this remote location. It's not like it's full of tinder ready to burn explosively. What? Oh, Subaru. What? Huh?
kind of go because we got you for it now. Let's go. Well, is it? Oh, what's in here? I want you to make this very good. It's salty, baby. Nineteen seventy. It's not even that old. Can I see it? Don't go there. Don't go there. Come. The avalanche guys come here for a serious rock crawling experience, and then this rock hound dude from LA just drives through in a car. There's always a treasure to be found. Fording a fjord with a Chevy. That was fun. Let's do it again. The trail has a number of little offshoots with secret dispersed campsites. This little unnamed creek in the ditch follows Lusardi Truck Trail all the way down to the Pamo Valley, where it merges with Temescal Creek, which merges eventually with San Diego River, which flows through the San Pasqual Valley replenishing the groundwater used in the area agriculture. Some of the water makes its way to be dammed in Lake Hodges Reservoir. Is this even locked? What? Oh, it's locked. <laughs> Is this San Diego or Maui? The year has been wetter than Jacques Cousteau's red wool cap. Prehistorically, the San Dieguido native tribe inhabited much of San Diego County, with their main villages on the San Dieguido River. Remains of this culture are identified as the San Dieguido River Complex. By the 16th century, most of the basin formed the southern part of the Luisino tribal territory. 
The Portola expedition of 1769 camped at the river, not far from the coast. On the De Anza expedition's way back to Mexico from San Francisco Bay, Father Pedro Font mentions Sandy Guillo in his diary on January 10, 1776. An Indian rancheria, San Diego, is mentioned under the jurisdiction of the San Diego Mission in 1778. In 1840 or 1841, after the mission period, the name was applied to the Rancho San Diego, which was granted in 1845. The name was later changed to Rancho Santa Fe. Guys follow a trail up the mountainside, trying to reach what looks like a quartz mine in satellite pictures. This trail has been closed to motor vehicle traffic by the Forest Service for more than a year now. The elevation rise of 600 feet is a bit harsh for the little dude, so the guys will head down and explore mining truck droppings instead. On the Avalanche Food Network, we make a delicious bushcraft dish of fried tilapia on rice.
Is it yummy? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Salt over there. Why wash the frying pan when you got shop towels? Five seconds. Six. Frozen waffles for a dessert. Okay, here's one. A little bit baked bad, but still fluffy. Belly's full. Guys head out for new adventures. Catch it on the next episode of The Avalanche in San Diego.